All right, so it's World Mental Health Day, and I wanted to talk a bit about sort of the stigma surrounding mental health as I sit in a noisy parking lot outside of my gym. Here's the thing. Sometimes you will do everything right. Sometimes the day will go exactly as it's supposed to, and somehow things go wrong. You know, your anxiety and your depression manifest in ways that you weren't expecting because the stigma surrounding mental illness presupposes that there must be some type of trigger that causes this when that isn't always the case. Sometimes your anxiety and depression manifests out of nowhere and for no real reason. Well, I'm sure there are chemical reasons, but by and large, you can't always predict when you're going to feel these influx of negative emotions. Allow me a brief detour. Um, on Monday, I released a video for regular car reviews that is a remake of a story about a transgender con artist who uh, created this three-wheel car and built people out of millions of dollars. And the reason that I wanted to remake it was twofold. For one, I wasn't proud of some of the factual inaccuracies in the original video, but the main reason was that I really wasn't proud of a lot of the jokes in there. At the original time that I made the video, it was one of my early solo videos for RCR, and so I felt the need to prove myself, to make stupid jokes, to make edgy jokes, to try to be funny. And in doing so, it was, I just said, dumb things, you know, at things that were very short-sighted and ignorant. And so I've been thinking for years of how to redo that video because it was coming from a place of deep ignorance, of not knowing better, of not being informed. And so I talked to people who helped educate me on the things that I was doing wrong because I had assumed that this con artist was someone who was co-opting the struggles of the transgender community to evade law enforcement when that wasn't really the case and even if it were that doesn't invalidate the transgender community at large their feelings and their personhood is valid their concerns are valid their struggles are valid the things that they're living every single day it's valid and i'm trying to be more sensitive to that but in trying to do the right thing, sometimes you still get it wrong. And, ah, spotted lanternfly. All I could possibly say is that I tried my best and I'm a person who's still trying to learn and grow and that I hope that I could be allowed the opportunity to continue to learn and grow. And so the same is true of mental health. People deserve the opportunity to be able to try and grow. And so here are some of the things that I do to try to take care of myself in terms of my mental illness, my anxiety, and my depression. And it's namely that I exercise. Like, yes, I am a bit on the heftier side, but I do lead an active lifestyle. I'm in the gym. I lift weights. I go on long walks almost every day. I sort of just I hang out with family and play with the kids you know it's something to do where your mind isn't on necessarily how you feel it's not on that sort of formless dread that seeds itself inside your mind and doesn't want to let go you know and I have that all the time, that sense that there's something over the horizon that I should be fearing. And in the process, I'm missing out on all the great things that are going on in my life right now. You know, I'm missing out on friends. I'm missing out on family. I'm missing out on things that make life worth living. And so I try to decompress in a way that allows me to appreciate those things more. And in a lot of ways, being active is one of those things. Taking care of your diet is another, you know? keeping away from things that are going to, if not trigger, then possibly um, raise the likelihood of an episode, you know, whether it's alcohol, whether it's caffeine, whether it's junk food. People have different things that make them feel sort of sluggish or anxious or like they're not worth anything. And that's a big thing, is that you need to be able to find the value in yourself. And what that means is that if you don't see yourself as having value, you have to do what you can to sort of imbue yourself 
with the value that you don't believe you have. But I do believe that as a human being, you have an innate value and that you deserve to feel like you have value. But for instance, some ways that you can sort of add value and confidence to yourself, I don't know, maybe learn an instrument, maybe um, learn another language, learn, uh, I don't know, just write something, you know, uh, and put it out there, make art. And art is whatever you want it to be. It could be a short story, it could be an entire book. Hell, it could be fan fiction for all anybody cares. You know, it could be a video, it could be a painting, it could be a car review, it could be anything. But as long as you can create something that you're proud of and add to the list of things about yourself that you can be proud of, then it's all the better for you because you feel, or at least in my experience, I feel like I have more to offer as a person. Which, again, personhood shouldn't have to rely on what it is necessarily that you can offer. Just by being here, you have value. But I understand how easy it is to feel worthless. But one of the more important things regarding mental health is to recognize that it's okay not to be okay, like the song goes. I think it's a Jesse J song, I'm not entirely sure. Asking for help is not weakness. Don't feel like you have to muscle your way through your mental health issues. Talk to somebody, it could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a mentor, it could be just, I don't know, talk to anybody, but just don't bottle things up because if you do, it's not going to help and it's only going to exacerbate the conditions that you have. You have to be willing to say what's on your mind, to express it to somebody. And if that means seeking out professional help in the form of a therapist, then all the better. Because taking care of your bodily health is one thing, but taking care of your emotional health is another. And now this is not to say, you know, hey, just pile on on all your friends, but it means surrounding yourself with the support structure that allows you to feel supported. Because if you feel supported, you're not going to feel like you're alone. And the God's honest truth is that you are not alone. There are millions upon millions of people who are going through the exact same thing you are. And there are any number, we are in an unprecedented age of internet forums and places where you can find help, where you can reach out, where you can talk with people who are going through the same thing or people who have been through the same thing and can help guide you through it. You don't have to feel like you're alone out here. And I understand that for a lot of people, th their emotions, they can sometimes be circumstantial. You know, it's rooted in things that have gone wrong in their lives. But in that case, I would still recommend talking to people, you know, because I think it's part of the human condition. It's what links us all is our empathy for one another. And I know it sounds corny, but I do think it's true. And I think there's value not just in you, but in your story. And so don't feel like any problem is too small. Don't feel like you have to keep things to yourself that no one's going to understand. Because I think the only way to really change the stigma of mental illness is to talk about it and to talk about how you're feeling and to recognize that talking about it, that crying, that you know, feeling in general is not weakness. And so in the same way that I felt worthless after the new video came out, I also understand that that's not the totality of the person that I am. I'm going to keep trying to improve myself and to grow as a person because even though I'm 34, growth never really stops. We're always learning, we're always growing, we're always evolving as people, which is very trite to say, but I think that for the most part, we have to accept that we're not all fully formed, no matter how old we are, that there's always room to grow and to learn new things and to come to greater understandings of people with whom maybe our understanding is wanting. And this is a thing where I guess some people should take it with a grain of salt because I'm really not sure how good this advice is, but if people ask you to go out and you really don't feel like going, 
there are some who will say, like, force yourself to go. It'll be good for you to sort of get out and do those things. But for me personally, I don't always see the value in forcing yourself to go do something that you don't want to do if it's going to inherently make you miserable. Like, if going to a crowded party full of people who are drinking is not your thing, but you have a bunch of friends who are, like, desperate to get you to come out... You know, it shouldn't be conditional on having to go do something that you don't want to do. There should be some middle ground between going to some noisy party and going to maybe a movie or a cafe or something. But I know that there is worth in pushing your own boundaries and sort of seeing what it is that you're capable of doing. But again, that that's on a person-by-person -person basis. And I know that for me... I know I wouldn't have been able to get as far into my anxiety battle if I hadn't pushed those boundaries or had them pushed for me in the form of the various RCR trips that I've taken or any of the various, you know, you know it's just like the international and the road trips. These were all things that I didn't think I could do until I forced myself to do them and suddenly I realized that all these things that I'd spent so much time fearing I was actually capable of confronting. But again, it's not... <sighs> go, the freaking spotted lantern flies. But I realize that's not for everybody. So, again, get professional help. Talk to somebody. But don't feel like the nature of the stigma surrounding mental health should preclude you from being able to express yourself. Because expression is a way to confront the things that are holding you back in life. Whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether it's bipolar disorder, you know? And I haven't even brought up medication because that's something that you really would need to talk to a doctor about, but I'm just talking in general. There are ways to sort of lessen the burden on yourself. Ultimately value yourself and value others and they'll value you too. And try your best and understand that you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to get it right all the time. But at the end of the day, as long as you're still trying, as long as you're still growing, as long as you're still learning, that you will always have something to offer this world. I'm going to leave some resources in the description that go into greater detail than I ever could and are more helpful than I ever could be. But this was something that I really wanted to talk about, and I hope that this reaches somebody and I don't know just hang in there okay just keep doing you because there's only one of you and it would be a shame not to have you around have a good one